Hello everyone. I hope that you can hear me now. Yes. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Ninth and Tenth Channel of Byju's. I'm your teacher Ankita, and today is a very special day, right? We are starting Class Tenth History, and what do you look? at the back right this is something i'm sure um gives you a feeling of a very very important event which started which took years and years and because of that particular thing we have this part in our history and of course we have so much to look forward to and learn yes great everyone so welcome to the class everyone Welcome to the class, class tenth, right? It's a class tenth, and the name of the chapter is the rise of the nationalism in Europe. It's a part one, everyone. Okay. So as you can see, we will be having part five on the thumbnail. I'm sure all of you have seen that there are how many parts? Five parts. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Let me quickly address each one of you who are here with us. Everyone, good evening. Welcome to the class. And so glad that all of you are here. Please make sure, everyone, that you are there with us till the end. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. And if you're new here, do take a moment and subscribe to the channel. Yes, I'm good. Thank you for asking. Thank you for asking. Yes, see, we have done this black and white theme because, of course, we're talking about the history, right? We're talking about the history. So I thought that you know we should be starting with something really interesting. Okay. Yes, pass. Right. Of course, we will be switching to the colorful mode. Don't worry. Don't worry. Right. But before that, everyone, let's quickly, quickly admire. Right. The history part that we'll be learning. And for all of you who are in class tenth, everyone, it's a very, very important chapter. Now the good thing is that you already have studied the French Revolution in class ninth. Now from that chapter, there was a foundation for this chapter. So I hope that all of you remember that chapter. Give me a quick thumbs up, everyone. Yes, we will have the colors in a bit. Yes, very good, very good, everyone. So I can see many of you saying, "Ma'am, I remember." Many of you saying, "Ma'am, I don't remember." Okay. Very good, everyone. So let's quickly, quickly revise the French Revolution in under five minutes. Let's try to revise, right? I'll not be very specific with the years, right? I want you to have the storyline of it, okay? So let's quickly revise. I want your support, everyone. Quickly hit the like button, and all of you stay with us till the end, right? It's a first, first class of history of class ten. I'm super excited. Really sorry it took us a while, but yeah, we are here. Good evening, everyone, and please make sure to hit the like button, everyone. Yes, awesome, awesome, everyone. Let's get started. So, of course, it's the past uh, part one, right of part five. So, let's get started. So, of course, we started with this, right? The French Revolution, everyone. Now, we all know this is really very important, right? And if you talk about it, I'm sure. Now, I want all of you to please pay attention. It is definitely, definitely important. Yes, very very important, everyone. So focus over here. I need your five minutes. Yes, very good, everyone. I will be taking all um, your names out when during the class, but everyone, let's just focus. It's black and white because for the history, we will be going back to the colors, but for a small part, right? Yes, for a small part when we are discussing the history, when I'm when I'm telling you the story about the French Revolution, everyone. Let's have it back, black and white. So all of you stay focused and let's get started. So of course it's a uh, it's a story of French Revolution. Now of course um, the story started long back, right? Of course there was a king, queens, there were ruling people, and people were very happy, right? People were really very really, I'll not say happy, but they were very kind of how we have this life. We can't do much about it. 
in the year 1774 something changes right Louis 16 became the king and what happened after that is something that all of us will remember Louis 16 absolutely correct everyone he became the king and he got married at the age of 20 right to a Australian prince Austria princess now of course they have a very lavish lifestyle right they have a huge palace they have parties they have maintenance of the house. Everything is happening. He is spending money left, right, right? Yeah, it's like just taking all the money and throwing out from the window. And suddenly, he realized that the treasury is empty. There's no money left, right? And what he thought, you know what? Yeah, treasure is not. They will ask the people, the poor people, the farmers to pay the tax. He wants to increase the tax. So that time in France, right, there were three states. First was the church people, right, the people who are very close, related to the church. So of course, we have a word for them, which is, okay, I'll just write it over here. We pronounce it a bit differently. Clergy, clergy, I'm sure you would have heard about it, right? Yes, they were the people who were associated with the church. And then, of course, we have the nobles, right? These are the people who were there at a very higher position. Right? But they don't have to pay the tax. Who used to pay the tax? The farmers, right? They were the one who used to pay the taxes. And of course, they don't have that money. They used to pay the taxes to the directly to the government, to the church. And of course, they used to work in the land where, of course, the nobility will be taking the money from them. Pavan people, right? They have so much taxes to give away. But of course, we all know that something revolution was happening and it happened. King called the estate general, right? Of course, in the year 1789, 5th of May, he called them. He said, you know what, we'll be increasing the tax. I need your permission. There, the third estate people said, that, you know what, we want one vote, one person. And the king said, no, 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 I will not be doing this. Right? I don't want to do this. I want my money. So then they strong, right? They left the estate general and they went out and they create the National Assembly, everyone. This year is super important because when we have the formation of National Assembly, it's the beginning of the new era, right? So of course, we saw the formation of National Assembly. They started working for the people, right? And of course, they came with the conclusion that you are the king, we'll make some power, right? We will give you some power, but not all. So yeah, and then we saw the formation of the, what we saw, we saw the formation of the constitution basically, where we have the three different division, legislature, judiciary and executive, you remember everyone? And then of course, we saw that slowly, slowly, very good, there were crises, right? And the king was like, you know what, I can go to my friends and I can ask for some army. But of course, National Assembly came to know and then they attacked those countries and got the king and the queen. After, after some time, of course, they were executed, right? So what happened after that? After the con constitutional monarchy, king is no more. We saw that the power went to the people. But again, which people? Rich people. And they started exploiting the poor people. During that time, we saw the formation of the Jacobins Club. You remember everyone? Jacobins Club had all the members which of the middle class, right? They're not that very rich, but they want to do something for the country. And they believe in equality. Everyone, I hope that all of you are paying attention. Very good. Red cap, absolutely correct. And then we saw the formation of a leader. Very good. Robespierre, right? Initially, he was a hero. Hero bina, hero bana, villain. After some time, we saw that in just in a year of one span, he become a kind of a person who is not treating people equally, who is actually uh, shutting down the women's club, no, not giving the rights to the women, and who is speaking against him, he will be executed, right? So after all of this, just in the villain one year, we saw that he was executed, right? We know that. So, of course, people has the power, right? People were in the full josh. People realize that they cannot just give power to anyone. They have to fight for the power. And at that time, there was a formation of the directorate, right? They decided, okay, we'll divide the power. We'll have two parties, two councils. And that also didn't work. Very good, regime of terror. After that, of course, we had the directorate. And of course, after that, the France was declared as Republic.
Anyone in the chat can you quickly tell me when France was declared as republic? Jaldi se. It's a very short, brief, beautiful story. Right in which year we saw? Yes, the France becoming republic. Yes, very good, very good. I can see some answers. Yes, think about it, everyone. In in 1791, we saw the formation of the constitution. That the small beginning, right? Yes, very good, everyone. 21st September 1792, we saw that the France become the republic nation where they had the elections kind of situation. Very good, very good. After that, of course, everyone, as we say, uh, things were changing, right? We saw the rise of a new leader. But all was happening just for the men and nothing for the women, right? There was nothing for the women. Women were still struggling for the basic right to vote, to have the equal pay as the male and they were still struggling. They were all in for the process. They were there with the people. But of course, do you think they got their rights? And a simple yes or no. Do you think that the women were heard in all of this French Revolution. No right? Absolutely correct. They got the right to vote in the year 1946. One year before we, India as a country, got our independence. Just imagine it took more than 200 years for them, right, for women to get the voting rights. And we all know that everyone, one of the important factor in the French Revolution, this is the important part, we saw the uprising of one of the great, at that time of course, the leader Napoleon Bonaparte, right? I'm sure you have heard about this name. During the, you know, discussions and the confusion that the directorate had, right? Nobody was there to take care of the France. And Napoleon took that chance and he said that I will be taking care of my country and he became the ruler, right? With the military power. So that was what you all have studied in class 9th. Everyone clear? Quick thumbs up. Quick thumbs up everyone. So we are clear what had happened in class 9th French Revolution. We will not Right? This is what we have studied. We will be learning more about Napoleon Bonaparte and what happened. People liked him, didn't like him. What was his rule? What was his code? We will be learning everything in class 10th. I can see lots of thumbs up. So, I think now we can go back to the color mode. Yes. And now we can start a class 8th part. Yes, everyone? Yes, very good. So everyone, it was just a small, simple, chotusa story. Yes, I can see. Now we can have everything colored. Yes, now I'm colored. I'll go back and I'll show you these beautiful images. Everyone, color is back in our life. Yes, so of course, the France flags. Yes, awesome. Awesome, trust awesome, everyone. And then of course, we have this. People raising their voice, middle class people, right? There was a formation of a middle class, the people who are doing jobs, businessmen, they're called as a uh, middle class, the business class, right? The working class. Yes, then there are, of course, the women. And, of course, the army. So, everyone, welcome to class 10th. I'm sure you will rock the examination in class 10th board examination. Don't worry. It's an official, official first class. Yes, and here we go. Now, everyone, let's talk about the first thing that we'll be learning in today's class. And um, we will be going from the chapters way, from the textbook, right? So in the, in the chapters, we in the textbook, right, we have six subdivision. So in today's class, we are focusing on the French Revolution the, and the idea of the nation. It's a beginning of the chapter. So, right, we will be uh, moving ahead with that. I want all of you to pay attention. So we'll not be taking much of your time. It's a very, very easy topic. So let's get started. You can take a screenshot what we'll be learning in today's class, like the breakdown of today's class. This is really very important so that our agenda is clear. Our agenda is completely clear that what we'll be learning in today's class. We will be discussing that what is the meaning of nationalism? Why did the French Revolution took place? Who were the key people who were involved in this? And of course, the key milestones. Okay. Introduction. Yeah, we will be starting. Great. So everyone, let's start with the first part. 
So let me ask you a very easy question. What is nationalism? Right, the chapter name is the rise of the nationalism in Europe. What do you understand by the word nationalism? Of course, it has, you know, few words. I'm sure all of you are aware about nation, national, right? And there are few words which are added. Yes, very good, very good. The idea of the patriotism. Okay, nation. Love to your own nation. The idea of a nation state. Absolutely correct. Love towards a country. Very good, very good. Desh Bhakti Ki Bhavna. Absolutely correct. The idea of a nation. The idea of equality. Absolutely. So everyone, you have that answers with you. So when we say that nationalism means a feeling of a pride and belongingness towards one nation that this is my country I feel proud about it right then it is a feeling that unites people and drive them to the fight for a common goal so during our independence right all the people came together to make sure that our motherland is free yes so nationalism is really very important so what we'll be learning in this chapter is that how the people who are not Keen and who are not thinking about as a nation, who are not thinking about the others as the brothers and the sisters, who are not concerned that what the country is, is meant for them, right? They understood the meaning of this word and took it to the great heights. Yes, everyone. So I hope that all of you are clear with the meaning of the nationalism. It is a feeling, right? It in a short word, if we say the love for the country. You want to do good for the country, you feel proud for the country, you want, a, there's a common goal that you want to protect for your country, you want to win that game for your country, you want to get there for your country. So it's all about the country and the country love. So now that we are clear that what is nationalism is, let's start with a very beautiful painting that we have in our class, class 10th textbook. How many of you have seen this uh, painting? I'm sure all of you because it's there in the first page. Right, it's there on the very first page of the chapter. Yes, very good. I can see a lot of you saying me, 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 me. Yes, everyone. So this painting, right, of course, you know, was made by a very, very famous painter, right, I would say. Frederick Soyo in 1848. We'll remember the name Frederick, everyone. Okay, he made a series of paintings, four paintings, and of course, this one of them is over here. Now, this... Right, gives a vision of this. They have been using a word. This word is very important. And I'm sure you would have seen a question. Also, maybe your seniors would have tell you. Or you will see this question. The word is utopia. I'm sure you would have heard about it. Utopia, right? An ideal perception. In any of the way, this is the ideal word. An idea, right? This is the ideal vision. The perfect vision that I can think about, the painter was thinking, this is the perfect vision for the world that I can think about. Yes, so this was a perfection in terms of the how the law will be there, how the people will be there, how the countries will be living together with peace and harmony. So what we see over here is important, right? So let's discuss what we have in this beautiful painting. Now, of course, before I show you all of these notes, I will be giving you time to take the screenshot. But let's quickly look over here, everyone. Yes, the meaning of utopia is the imaginary uh, kind of a feeling of a per perfect society. So over here, the painter is actually painting the world which is not there in reality. But he wants in the future this to be happen, right? He wants that this painting where the countries are free, they're all are united, should come become the reality. Everyone, are we clear? Yes, clear. Are we clear, everyone? Yes, very good, very good. Yes, thumbs up. Okay. Now, now in this picture, in this particular picture, everyone, there are a few things that you have to remember. Yes, now, of course, we can see over here. I can see many of you writing my fraternity. Yes, very good. So, see over here, everyone. In the clouds, we have the Jesus Christ. We have the lots of angels, right? And on the below, we can see this. Right, we can see the statue. Now, of course, at that particular time, the statues, of course, it's a female statue representing the liberty, the freedom. Right? Yes. Yes. This statue, liberty, shows the... Liberty means freedom. It just shows that 
the freedom okay we can see that switzerland and united uh, state are actually ahead of the statue of liberty over here right and the other countries are following countries like germany right france is just over there there are other countries who are there in the line who are moving towards pushing away the monarchy king's rule and moving towards the equality in the society uh, i can see that many of you are asking doubts everyone if you pay attention i'm answering your doubts yes very good very good then of course we can see over here at the back everyone on the ground we can see the crowns right we can see the crowns it just shows that that monarchy the king's rule is nowhere now near right that's the end of the king rule and they want a nation right the painter want a nation where there is no king then of course we can see the fraternity that means a feeling of brotherhood yes the feeling of brotherhood the the feeling of that you all are one right you are a part of the country you are there together so if you think of this particular painting everyone it tells a lot just imagine just imagine everyone this particular painter i'm sure would have made this painting in 18th century right actually 19th century from 18 to 19th century have imagined this amazing world where there's a lot of equality where the king rules is gone and of course where the people are really very really happy yes yes so uh jent uh, it's a very valid question there are times you know so i think the women figure as the in the you know in all of these uh, countries with the symbolize you know uh, liberty all of these stands for a women because in the past of course they have the history of it right and it just comes out of the respect but again to think back that even though they respect women they never gave the voting right to them it's in kind of irony that we have yes very good so everyone are we clear with this are you clear that what we have in this particular picture so that was a very brief information now of course you can take the screenshot everyone you will be getting the notes on the telegram so don't worry about it yes don't worry about it yeah it's a yes okay so everyone let's see so of course we know that the painting was made okay let me just okay yeah so of course the painting was made right and of course it just made talks about the democratic and the social republic as he called them right we can see people of europe and america moving ahead of the statue they are already there the french revolution is there so they are just moving towards it very good very good uh they have shown the america and switzerland ahead or in front of the statue because they are already a nation state right they don't have the king's rules there of course there is a democracy we will take care of the notes yes okay very good okay everyone yes i will take care of the notes everyone don't worry uh yes i hope this is fine yes this is definitely fine okay everyone awesome chaliye so everyone this is clear right of course okay what well, then what of course is a very important thing we talked about this the end of the monarchy now there is no king's rule in the picture right in the painting the painter is thinking that there is no king's rule anymore then of course it is a ethiopian vision we already discussed about it right Fra france may we can see the tricolor over here right and then of course followed by the other countries like germany and other things even though they haven't have the revolution but still they are on there so yeah it is a very imaginary perfect world that the painter imagine are we everyone are we clear yes good so i'll just quickly repeat what we have studied we started with the nationalism so nationalism is nothing but a feeling of pride for the country you want to do good for the country you are conscious for the country that is a feeling of nationalism utopia vision everyone who are facing any issues utopia vision is a perfect imaginary vision right for example you are sitting in this class and you are thinking i will get 100 out of 100 in sst it's a perfect vision right you are thinking something about the future 
that is the Ethiopia vision the painter Frederick have okay and he painted this beautiful painting where the nations are moving towards the liberty towards the freedom and King's rules is not there everyone are we clear good very good yes absolutely correct everyone so with this we are done with this particular part thumbs up thumbs up I hope that all of you are enjoying yes I can see you asking about the modern state, we'll have that later, but just wait for some time. Ma'am, which country is the first national state? That you have to tell me after this class and you, you will, will, we will have the answer. Nation, uh, Pranjal, we will find out that when France become a nation state. Right, okay everyone, so let's move ahead. Okay, now when we're discussing about the na nation state everyone, we will be discussing about the origin of it. As you are all are very interested, let's talk about the origin of the na nation state. Now, what is the meaning of nation state? In a simple word, there is one central organized power, right? Who is controlling the territories, who is taking care of the territories, right? That is, of course, the nation state, right? It is taking care of the people. It is not controlling any other country, right? It is letting its people go really free, have a lot of freedom. So that is the idea of the nation state. Let's understand its origin. When we talk about its origin, there are a few elements of its origin. First, of course, majority of its citizens, right? Yes, majority are there as a citizens and not as a ruler, right? They have a sense of common identity. And of course, they have a shared history. So everyone, one thing. Okay, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? For example... Right? Let's suppose you are going, let's suppose you're going on a school trip. No, you're going on a family trip. Okay, I'll tell you my example. So I went to Egypt, right? I went to Egypt. And of course, it's a foreign country. And uh, what happens when you leave our country, right? Yeah, you, you are visiting, you're seeing places. But whenever you see someone who is Indian origin, Right, or who is from India, or maybe from your same hometown, or they speak the same uh, language that you speak. I'm sure you have a sense of uh, closeness. Yes, tell me. I'm sure this had happened to all of us. If we find anyone who has any sort of connection, right, uh, that we that we can relate to, maybe they like the same food, or they are from the same place, or they maybe they are same. They are, you have been living in the same neighborhood. Right? It's a feeling, wow, common, you know, common identity. You can relate to so many other things. So initially, before the king's rule, right, they used to worship the king. I'm sure you agree to this, right? During the king's rule, during the monarchy, people didn't have this feeling of oneness, right? They didn't have the feeling of brotherhood. They are there, okay, fine, you are there with me, I don't know. But I'm not thinking so much about you. But... As the revolution started, as the people becoming and become more and more educated, liberal, right? And when they realize the importance of equality and freedom, they started thinking about others, right? They started understanding that, oh, we should be staying together, we should be helping together. Clear? Everyone, are we clear? So, the three important elements, right? that actually help us to identify a nation state right is by of course we have citizens we have more citizens than the ruler right we have a common identity we can relate to the common identity and most importantly we share the history clear everyone these three important points shared history common identity and majority of its citizen and not the ruler clear everyone Yes, India is a nation state. Everyone, are we clear? Quick thumbs up, everyone. Now, this is a white color pen, so definitely a kaju katli for all of you. Yes? Good. Awesome. Kaju katli for you, everyone. Thumbs up. Badiya hai. So, now that we are clear with this, let's understand and I want you to, see, I want you to observe this map. Achha, yaan pe dekhi, everyone. This is a map in your textbook also. Right, this is a map in your textbook which is given and they are asking us to just to look at this particular map. We can see there are so many boundaries and there are so many countries we would say, right? Now let's see this. 
and see this. Now I'm sure you'll be able to see the comparison. Now of course we, we don't have much countries left. Initially of course definitely there were more, way more countries. Or let's say they were kind of patchwork scattered. But now things have changed. So now everyone we will be understanding the rise of the nationalism in Europe. So with this everyone we are done with the first, first part. Write that what is nationalism and what was the context behind the nationalism. Yes everyone, for example, for example you know that Saturday, let's suppose you have a school, right? And you know that you want a games period, what you will do, right? Maybe you raise a SST class and you want a games period in that particular class. So you will request your teacher, I'm sure the teacher will agree, right? You all will come with a plan that we all will go together because we want this games period, right? You will be looking for a common goal. That is how similar idea is based upon the nationalism when the goal is same and you all are thinking about the country. Clear? Yes. Map skills. Yes, we will be doing the map skills. Don't worry. Very good. Very good everyone. So till now I hope that all of you are clear. Yes. I'll quickly recap now and if you have any doubts I'll take your doubts everyone. Yes. I will be giving you the quick summary. So we started with the nationalism. All of us understand what is the meaning of nationalism. The sense of pride, the sense of belongingness to the country, right? That is nationalism. We took an understanding of the Frederick painting also, right? Ethiopia vision where everything is perfect. There's no king's rule. People are moving. People are free. There's liberty. There's freedom. There's equality, right? And countries are moving towards it. Very good. Yes. Yes. Very good. And of course, then we discuss about the idea of the nation, nation state. In nation state, we have three elements that you have to remember. First, of course, they shared the common identity, right? They shared the history and there are more people, there are more citizens than the ruler. Everyone, are we clear? Yes. The closest country which are uh, very close to the statue are the Switzerland and America. Sovereignia, right? Uh, Sovereignia means uh, the country who has a power, right? Who's controlling its own country, not getting disturbed by any external thing. Just one supreme power who's controlling the country, uh, country's rules and regulations, right? Has had a different meaning, but the one supreme power for the country. We will discuss about that. Good. Yes, Ishika, that means that we're talking about the king's rule over there, right? King's rule. Very good. Good, everyone. Yes, don't worry, everyone, don't worry. See, this is just the beginning, so we are learning everything. We'll have separate classes for map. We'll have separate classes for all the uh, pictures that you have in this particular chapter, right? We will be having separate class for the resource boxes that you have in your textbook, so don't worry. Okay, Jishna will discuss about it, Bache. Yes, it represents the three important color. Initially, there was a king's flag, right? But of course, this comes to the people who are there. Five chapters, five, cha five different parts for this particular chapter. Okay, everyone, are we clear? I hope that all of you have taken the screenshot. Yes, if you haven't, please take. Very good. Okay. Na uh, nation state and modern state will discuss that. Uh, Rohit, give me some time. Harsh, you have to find this answer. Little star, please answer your uh, ask your doubt. Yes, Prashanta, very good, very good twin. Okay, everyone, we are good to go, right? Torch enlightenment ka beeling, but it's basically it's a bearer, right? It's just showing the light. Yes, and it just it stands for the equality. It stands for the freedom. Yes, very good, very good. I think uh, some of you were asking about the meaning of the absolutist, right? So basically, means that there's a king rule, there's no government, right? Only one person has the power and only one person is taking care of everything. Yes. Nation state, mein bache, ne, what is the meaning of nation state over here? It's a state, of course, which has a central power, right? Initially, the king is ruling and everything is happening. Now we have a central power, right? And of course, it includes the citizens also. It has citizen involvement, they have the common identity, they share the same history. Yes. Yes, little star. King's rule. Yeah, in a simple way, King's rule. 
Very good, very good everyone. So I think everyone is clear. I'll just move aside. You can take a screenshot everyone quickly. Everyone, we have to move a little bit quick. Yes. Very good. You can take this. Okay. Yes, it's a one hour class. Welcome to the class everyone. I can see so many of you who, so many of you here. Sorry for the slip of words. Chali everyone, let's move ahead. Okay. Now, what do you see over here? We have just discussed as a recall so that all of you are all of us are on the same page. Nationalism is nothing but the idea of forming a nation state where the majority of its citizens share common culture, a sense of collective identity. So that is our formation or the foundation of the nationalism. Okay. Yes, very good. Okay. Now that we are clear with this, let's understand everyone the background of the rise of nationalism in Europe. Right. Now we know that French Revolution was there, I'm sure. We have just, we just quickly recapped the French Revolution. So we know what happened in the French Revolution, right? It was the beginning of something. It was the very first step towards the nationalism, right? People became aware about it and that they wanted to have a, a nation where the, they have the freedom, right? Where there's equality. So the revolution which was happening in France shifted, right? Yes, it shifted from the kings to the people. Now the people wants the control. And the revolution proclaimed that it was a people who would constitute the nation and shape its destiny. So if we think about it, right, you're asking them what is nation state, what is nationalism and what is this state? So when the revolution was happening, people started realizing that we don't want king's rule. Everyone, are we clear? Yes? Okay, let me ask you a question. Do you want a king's rule? Do you think that, can you imagine, can you imagine a country in current world and do you want to go in that and live in that particular country? Yes or no? No, right? We don't want a king's rule because then the person will be controlling all our actions or everything will be controlled by that. But now we are living in a nation where of course we have the involvement Right, we have the involvement in forming of the government. We can definitely go ahead and talk about the things that are not working for us. Right, so that is really very important. So what we saw, there was a shift. I think many of you are asking, what is the second point? We saw the shift. Right, yes, we sh we saw the shift where the people, where the people started believing in the power of the. So opportunity, basically, now what is the meaning of this word? I think many of you are asking. Yes. Anyone in the class, can, can you help me understanding what is the meaning of this word? Yes, think about it. In a country, right, for example, initially it was a king's rule. Now the things are shifting. Now the power is going to the people it is going to the government right a government which is selected by the people and not by just by the king right so let's talk about the supreme power first of all the word that will be helping you to understand the meaning of this word is the supreme power yes so the country becomes supreme power the government became the supreme power it is being controlled right Yes, and they have no influence from outside. For example, India is a sovereign country. Basically, it has its own rules, regulation, right? And it is not controlled by any other country. Everyone, are we clear? Yes, are we clear? Good, 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 very good. Yes. So in a very simple word, it is, it, uh, the meaning of this word is that, that, supreme power the power is with the country it is not controlled right very good I can see some of the happy faces some of the sad faces don't worry everyone yes who shifted the power the people shifted the power right the people now thinking in a very correct way they're not moving towards the monarchy they're moving towards the supreme power they're looking for the nation they don't want the king now clear so this second point means over here that the people Right, are changing their mindset. They don't want the king's government and now king's rule, they want the people's rule. Clear? People shifted the power. Who shifted the power? It's people only, right? 
got here. Very good, very good. Civics classes will be hongi. We will be starting that soon. Yes, I know. It's nostalgic. Yes. Okay, everyone. Now let's see. Now let's see what are the things people were doing, right? Okay, everyone. Can you give me a one minute? Do take a screenshot of this in a minute. Yes, everyone. Okay. Right? So now, let's understand that what are the things that people were doing or what are the things that were happening in the France to give the feeling of oneness. Okay, let's suppose everyone. Now, you are going for a school or sports event. Right? Okay, there's a sports day. Okay? And uh, of course, definitely you're going to a sports meet, right? And where we have five different schools throughout the state. Your school is one, two, three. Of course, these are the, these are the number of the schools we have. Now, you belong to number one or number two or number three or number four or number five also. Yes. Now, think about it, everyone. Now, when you're going to a sports day, definitely you, first of all, want to win. The race or the competition, whatever you participated in. Yes or no? You want to win, right? But you want to win for your school. Right? They will say that, you know, this particular girl or a boy actually got this medal for our school. Right? You know what will happen? All your friends, all your classmates, all the people in the school will be supporting you. The same thing happens when a sports person goes to represent our country in Olympics. Even though we have no idea, right, we don't know the person in, uh, personally, we don't know sometimes the sports also properly, but we become super proud when an Indian wins an Olympics. Yes or no? Yes or no? And I'm sure you would have seen that before the sports day or before any of the function, we have special songs, special dresses, right, that symbolize... Then, of course, um, we have uh, special ways that we actually get connected. Yes? So, of course, all of these things are there. And these things were happening, everyone, not just now, way back during the French Revolution. To unite all the people together, right? The France people had various things so that they can relate to one other and to the others, right? So let's see everyone, what are the th these things. And again, super important from the exam point of view, making a star over here. Please do pay attention. What are the things they were doing? The French measures and practice that will be creating a sense of collective identity that we all are same. First, very important thing, idea of la patrie and la citoyenne. Basically the fatherland, right? Over here. Right? The sense of fatherland. So in our country, we call our motherland as the Mata. Right? We treat India as a mother. Yes or no? Yes, we treat our uh, motherland as the mother. We always say that, right? So in France, they are considering the country as a fatherland. And of course, all the citizens. To fatherland and for the people. They have tricolor flag which was replaced by the royal flag. So of course, people can relate to it. Then, of course, uh, we saw the formation of National Assembly. Yes, National Assembly uh, was formed. And Estate General, after some time, was called as National Assembly. Very good. And then, of course, they had a centralized administrative system. These things were happening. Apart from that, everyone, a uniform system of weight and measure. We have studied in, in the French Revolution. There was the reduction of the different types of weights and measure. Now, they're coming at a certain place where we have limited weight measures right so that the people can do the trade easily then of course internal custom duties and dues were ab abolished french as a uh, language become more and more prominent in communication with the people so people were speaking in french apart from that regional dialect was discouraged for example everyone uh, 
I'm sure all of you have, uh, you know, you are from different different states all together. In that different state also, right, you will see that there are different uh, kind of language that we speak. From one part of to another part, right, the, the, the things and the words that we usually speak will change. So, the regional dialect were discouraged, so people were supposed to, they want people to speak in France so that there's a, a sense of oneness. And of course, new hymns, new poems and oath was written. Yes. Very good. Oh, hi Bhavish. Yes, I do remember you. Yes, Nishan, Sachin, let's focus on class. Good, very good. Okay. So after this, everyone, what we saw, we saw that the French people are coming together, right? And they really want a one nation with one equality, right? They want equality. That's how we saw the formation of the Jacobins Club, right? People are coming together. The middle class people, right? The middle class. They are the flag bearer of the unity. They are the flag bearer of equality. They are the one who is talking about these ideas and spreading it to the various people. So we saw the formation of the Jacobins Club, right? And of course, we saw these ideas not just in France, but getting spread into the neighboring countries like Belgium, Holland, Switzerland, etc. So we know, now know that this idea was not there in the France, but moving ahead to the different parts of the countries also. Everyone, are we clear? Yes, very good. Quick thumbs up everyone, quick thumbs up. Thumbs up. That's nice, Nishant, and that's nice, I hope. Okay, everyone. Okay, I can see thumbs up and it's a question time, everyone. Let me quickly ask you a question. Which dynasty did the French nationalists want to remove from the power? Oh, it's a question from the French Revolution, everyone. You guys, I didn't get the word, but say, please, can you? Uh... Very good, Bhavish. Congratulations. Very good, very good. And I can see the long chain of answers. I'm super proud of you, everyone. Super proud to be your teacher. Yes, Bourbon dynasty, right? Right, so of course, the Louis the 16 were from the Bourbon dynasty. Dynasty. Nice, everyone. Okay. So, everyone, let's quickly recap. Okay. Recap time, recap time, recap time. What we know about nationalism? Yes, now we know about the nationalism. Right? Yes, and then, of course, we talked about the nation state. Yes, then we talked about the painting. Right? Utopia vision. Yes, very good. What all we have studied? We have studied about the Jacobins Club. Yes. Very good. And of course, we saw that. What are the practice, right? What are the things were taken by the French people for common identity? Hello, hello everyone. Good evening. Welcome to the class. Okay. Now everyone will be moving to the last two parts. Chhotu sa part. These are everyone. This is a very small part. Let's quickly finish them off. We will be discussing about the key people who were there involved in the French Revolution. Tara, presenting you everyone, Napoleon Bonaparte. Yes, you're a little bit late, but it's okay. You can watch the session later. Aram se baadun dekh sakte ho. You can, you know, go back and see it. Yes. So Napoleon Bonaparte, everyone, was emerged as a leader, right? And he took the step towards and he wanted to protect his country, right? He's known as a very amazing military leader, right? And uh, under his rule, right, we saw the French army started carrying the ideas of nationalism to different parts of Europe. He's moving on different countries, actually spreading the idea of, spreading the idea of nationalism. But, but the but, there's a lot of but right over here. The question is whether he was loved by the people. Let's understand. We will be able to understand this only when we understand what he did. So everyone, a very, very important question that usually come in the examination, right, is the Napoleon Code or also called as a civil code. 1804 mein aaya tha. Oh, I'm sure that all of you will remember. Yes. Oh, that's nice, that's nice. 
Yes, Bhavish. Congratulations. Very good, Harsh. 1804, Prashant. Good. Sadiyash, okay. Prashant, okay. Very good. Very good. So let's see everyone that what we have in the Napoleon code. So Napoleon did a very good thing. He removed every privileged from all the people. You be the if you are in a noble family or a poor family. What else? You have no privileges. You have no privilege based upon the birth, right? It's not that oh, you know what my father has this, so you can get the same thing. Okay? Then there's equality before the law. Law will be treating all the people equally, be it the rich people or the poor people. Most importantly, it secured the right to property. So, of course, people can have property. It's not that nobody has a property, right? So, this is these are the things that we have, everyone, right? So, at, there was a time when, of course, uh, people would have money, right? And uh, it's even if they have the money, they can't buy the property sometime. But, of course, over here, when he removed all the all of these privileges that the people used to get during the birth time, it was a very win-win situation. People were really very happy. Yes, okay, Nakshatra. Right, people were really very happy. Wah, wah, kya baat hai, right? Then, of course, Napoleon did a very important thing in simplifying the administrative division. So, of course, he did what? He, he made sure there's a good administrative system. He removed the feudal taxes of the system. Everyone, I'm sure you remember what is feudal tax or the feudal system. How many of you remember? How many of you remember the feudal system? Yes? For example, if this is a land and this is a landlord. Yes? You know what? People will be working. The peasant or the farmers will be working in the farms. Right? And this farm belongs to who? This person, this noble only. Okay? These poor people will be giving, first of all, the service to the service to the landlord. We are working in your khet. We are working in your land. We will be giving you our services. Apart from that, they have to pay the taxes also. Yes, they have to pay the taxes also. That was a feudal system. Everyone, are we clear? Yes? So, for example, if a farmer is working on a piece of land which does not, uh, which he does not have it, which belongs to the landlord, they will be providing the service, they will be acting as a labor in the field. Apart from that, they will be giving the money, the tax also to, to the landlord. Clear? That was a feudal system, which definitely was a very good thing that Napoleon Bonaparte deleted, abolished it. Right? Then, now... The peasants are free from any of the taxes. Now they don't have to give the taxes. Most importantly, he removed the guild, gl guild restriction. Now what is that? I'm sure you would have seen. For example, if you're new, right? Let's suppose you are going to a new school, everyone. It's a house. Okay. I don't know how to make a school. Yeah, something big building, something I'll make. Yeah, this is how I used to make school when I was a kid, I guess. Okay. So if this is a school... And you are a new kid. Right? And of course, there are old kid. Yes? Now, they are the one who will be, you know, playing, let's suppose, basketball. And you are a very good player of the basketball. You want to go and join the team, but they'll be like, no, you are not allowed. Yes? Adharva, I just saw your question. Right? And I request you to please don't spam. Please ask the question. I, I think I've missed your question. I didn't see your question. Yes. It will be great if you can repeat your question. Everyone, are we clear? Sachin, I'm not ignoring anyone. Sachin, you are not focusing in the class. I can see that. It's just that I'm focusing on all of you who are paying attention to the subject. Okay? Good. So, everyone, are we clear? Yes? Are we clear? Very good. So, of course, he removed the guild system, which was more in terms of the trades. So, during the trade, right, during the business time, what will happen? These people will be coming together, right? The noble people, the rich people, they'll have their small group and they will not allow any other businessmen from outside to establish their shops or to do the business. So, this was a very, very big huddle that he removed, which is a very good thing. Then, of course, there was a lot of in improvement in the transportation and communication. There were the standardization of the weight and measures so that people can use the same weight and measures and the business will, will become more and more prosper. And, of course, they have the common national currency. Initially, they had very n number of 
you know national currencies but he reduced it so that the exchange of the money become really very easy yes so these are the good things that he did everyone clear feudal system smartest way is a system where the farmers are working on a land which was owned by the land lord right and they will be providing him the service and they will be giving him the tax also right for doing the work they have to pay the tax to the landlord that is that was a feudal system clear 30 to 3 or 30 to 2 yes very good there was a huge there was a 30 approximately currencies but of course he reduced it to two so that the people can have the uh, trade easily everyone are we clear okay bye bye bhavesh do take care of yourself and all the best yes nakshatra we will come to know whether he was good or not just uh, just we'll just discuss bachche so krit uh, so uh, so menor now right this word what is the meaning of this word menor menor are the big bungalows right menor are the big bungalows that uh, that were there at that particular time now also we have so the people who are working on that particular place right have to pay the manual taxes like uh, the taxes that they will paying to they were paying to the Uh, land lords. I hope that it's clear. Clear, everyone. Good, very good, everyone. I hope that is clear. You can take a screenshot. Awesome, awesome. Everyone, quickly answer this question. When was the civil court established in France? Easy, easy question, everyone. Yes. Yes, everyone. <clears throat> Very good. I can see the correct answer, and the correct answer is option number C, eighteen zero four. That is a year. That is a year we saw the uh, you know entering of the civil code in France, establishment of the civil code or the Napoleon Code. Okay. So everyone, are we clear up to here? sweetie it means that for example it goes in the family right the, the uh, it's a kind of a labor but they have to means kind of they are in a slavery they will be going from one generation to another generation and they have to work in the same place right and it's kind of yeah yes are in the easiest way to remember dates is to connect the dates with something that you have in your life for example your birthday your parents birthday your siblings birthday right any important date that you remember maybe okay this on this day you know cricket uh, india india and cricket team won this match so try to relate things if you can relate it to something right you will be able to remember maybe you can read as a filmy story ki acha hai aisa ek hero tha aisa tha make your stories right and then uh, it will be easy for you to remember everything Hardika uh, civil court was established by uh, Napoleon Bonaparte and we have just studied what he did good things smartest way bachche i just explain feudal system to you only so now if there's a piece of a land if the farmer is working they have to pay a tax to the land lord smartest way parth jishna yes okay namrira i'll tell you that Sanjini, very good. Yes, Hardika, Poonam, very good. Smartest way. Okay, everyone. Last topic, and then we'll we'll quickly finish our class. We'll end our session. Last is what was the key milestone? So first thing, everyone. The question is that yeah, Napoleon was doing all of this, but do really people see him as a hero? Yes, I don't think so, right? Many of you are asking uh, in the class, ma'am, do you think that he was a good person or a bad person? So he had an idea. In the beginning, the idea was really very good that he wanted to do something good for the country. He wants to make sure that people have freedom. But you know what? It's not that he was not. He didn't do anything bad for the people. There are few things which he did was that were not accepted by the people. So let's understand what are the things that he did. First of all, the local population have you know mixed reactions to it. You know what? As a uh, as a as an and when the you know his popularity spread, it people realize that ah uh, he is actually the same. He is just like the monarch only, right? He is just like the monarch. Why? Because right? Because of the new administrative 
arrangements, right? They don't have any political freedom. They were censorship. The people cannot talk anything about him, cannot write anything about him. There was a, there was the political freedom was got restrained. Then of course they have he increased the taxes. There was censorship, right? They actually forced people to join the French army so that they can conquer other countries. So all in all. All in all, after a while, people realize that he's not that great. He's actually same like the other kings, maybe in a different clothes. But yeah, he is like the kings only who wants their rules to be followed. So yeah, that was all about the Napoleon Bonaparte. Important thing over here, everyone, right? Uh, so they used to, wherever they will go, right? They used to, people will call them as the Harbingers, right? Harbingers of Liberty. That means that, right, they are the person who is, uh, you know, representative of the freedom. For example, if you are going, right, if you are representing a sports, they will call you by that name. So, of course, they have a very special name, which was Harbinger's Right of Liberty. Clear, everyone? Ashish, he came to the power because he was a military leader and at a time when the French was, does not have a very strong leader, he protected the France from the invaders and of course the attacks of other country and he became the leader. Because he forced, uh, yeah, he forced other people to join the French army so that he has more people to fight, right? And he can definitely go and conquer other countries. He want to rule other countries also. He want to spread the idea of nationalism and capture other countries and make it like the France. Everyone, are we clear? Yes, clear everyone. Quick thumbs up. Awesome, awesome. Yes, everyone. So, with this, I hope that all of you have hit the like button, everyone. Yes, everyone. How many likes we have? We should have 100 likes. Come on. We spent one hour studying history. I'm sure we, we should have more likes, right? I can see many of you are new here. Welcome to the class, everyone. Welcome to the class. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Awesome. Now, everyone, we will be ending the class. If you have any doubts, please ask me. If not, we'll go ahead with a summary. Yes. Done, 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 done. I can see you're saying, ma'am, it's all done. Awesome. Badia hai. We have 111. Thank you so much, everyone. Yes. One shout out to Vijit, Monalisha, sorry, Monisha, Rohit, Nantara. Bye bye, French Revolution once. Oh, smartest way. I'm really sorry. That's a long story, Bajje. Uh, I'm sorry, smartest way. Can you see that in the beginning? Yes, Ishika, Sukrit, Hardia. Thank you so much, Bacha. Shreya, thank you. Bye-bye. Yes, Vijit, Akron. Next session, tomorrow. Smartest way, really sorry. Yes, Pooja. You, this chapter is very important. Bye-bye, everyone. There was no Napoleon 1 and 2. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much for the hard work. But everyone, where are you going? We have a homework question and a summary. Hmm. Aise Right, we have a question everyone and here we have a summary. So in today's class we have studied about a quick recap of the French Revolution. Then we got an idea that what was happening at that time. People want to have the freedom and the liberty. And that's how the idea of nationalism started spreading in the France, right? Then we talked about uh, the formation of the Jacobins Club. Then of course we talked about the painting. I'm just going randomly over here so that we have all the important points that we have discussed, right? We started with the painting, right, uh, of the utopian vision. Uh, imaginary perfect vision for the world. Then we talked about the nation state where, where of course we have one centralized government. People share the common identity, they share the history and more citizens are there than the ruler. Then of course we talked about the important roles of various individuals. We talked about the Jacobins club where of course the common people are coming and helping. We talked about the National Assembly, right? And of course, we went ahead and we discussed about when France become a republic, right? And of course, later, we got into the details of the how they all came together and they wanted to have the same thing for one nation. So the idea, the, the idea of common identity was created for the France people, uh, tricolor flag, fatherland and the citizens, right? Common languages, oaths and hymns were created. Then of course we discussed more about the revolution, how it spread, 
right and of course at the end we talked about the Napoleon Bonaparte yes very good yeah the, the flag is called as a revolutionary because it was a representation of the people it represents the three things unity right liberty and fraternity right so it, it represents all of these clear so it at that particular time it was it is changing the royal flag right the royal flag is no more which was there since so many years so the, definitely it was a revolution yes okay everyone so we're ending this session I want you to look at this picture I want you to look at this picture and you can see that We'll be learning in the upcoming classes that how Napoleon actually uh, lost whatever he got. Yes, of course, these things were just moving. All these are the states which he, con he conquered. But after the Battle of Waterloo, he just... So basically, his painting just shows that whatever he got, he's just leaving it behind. So that's it, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, everyone. But over here, we have the question. It'll be great... If you write the answer in the comment section below and this will be helping you to understand that how you will be writing the answer in the examination. So please do write about the Napoleon code. Yes. Yes. Very good everyone. You will be getting the PPT. You will be getting the PDF on the telegram. So don't worry. With that everyone. Yes. Let's end the session. Thank you so much everyone. We have got you covered. And please don't forget to hit the like button for the video. Share with your friends and subscribe to the channel. I will share the PDF on the telegram. Yes. Just in case if you have any doubts, if I missed your doubt, I'm extremely sorry. Please do write your doubt in the comment section below. We will pick it up tomorrow or next class me. Okay. Thank you so much everyone. Thank you for all the love and thank you for coming to the class and staying with us. Okay, let me ask you a question everyone. Can we have a small poll please? Okay, can I ask you a question everyone I need? Okay, 62 of you are here in the class as of now. Can you help me with one small thing? Tell me everyone, do you want class at 5 p.m.? Sorry? Yes, uh, oh no, you can give 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. Two options. Everyone, you want class at uh, 5 p.m. or 9 p.m.? So you have to pick one option everyone. Okay? For this week, because we are studying this chapter, so I want all of you to you know uh, have a common timing everyone we have two timings over here do you want the uh, you know class at 5 p.m. or 9 p.m. please vote for it I can see 5 p.m. going away ahead very good okay yes everyone please vote we have 41 votes now we have more than 60 students in the class so all of you, we know that one vote, one person, and every vote counts. We, you will have a geography session also, Fatima. Don't worry. We will be making sure we we cover all the syllabus. Okay, so we will go by majority because we live in a country and we have studied about the democracy. So we will be going ahead with that, right? We'll go with the majority. So I'll count till ten and we will end the poll. So one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Done everyone. So according to the votes that we have, 57 of you have voted, right? Out of 62, that's a, that's a good majority. We will be having classes at 5 p.m. everyone. Okay, so we will plan. I'll let you know. Please make sure to watch the telegram. I will be posting on the telegram. Apart from that, Please do watch on the community post also because I will be posting the information there also. All clear? Yes. Tomorrow at 7 we have class. Tomorrow at 7 p.m. we have class. So I want to see you tomorrow for sure. Maybe next week or sorry next day we might have a class at 5. Okay. With this everyone, thank you so much for your votes. And thank you so much for staying with us till the end. Lots of love from my side. Right. Please make sure to hit the like button. Please make sure to subscribe this video to your friends and subscribe to the channel. I'm good, Vijay. Thank you for asking. Right? Bye bye, everyone. And do take care of yourself. Keep yourself super energetic, super healthy. And keep on learning with Baijus. Lots of love, everyone. Bye bye. Good night.